apples. Today we are going to be talking about the S word. The S word can be a touchy subject for both men and women. The S word can also cause division in marriages leading to divorce. The S word can be a source of stress and strain and unfulfillment for some marriages. The S word can even be a struggle point for Christians in our individual walks with Christ. Today we are going to be deep diving into biblical submission. What is it? What isn't it? How do we do it? What are the benefits of submission? Well, in today's episode, I am having a real life conversation with another good apple, Grace McCoy, and we will be sharing our personal stories of biblical submission to our spouses in our marriages and to God in our lives. Now, whether you are married, single, male or female, I know this episode will bless you because we are all called to submit to God. So stay tuned. Apples! Welcome back to the weekly podcast, The Good Apple, with me, your host, Sharonda Simone. The Good Apple is a place where Christ followers, at any stage of your walk, can learn to apply powerful, life-transformative, biblical truths to live in the world, but not of the world, according to John 15. We are a community of kingdom kids who live bright lives, seasoned and salty, with lots of godly flavor to enhance the world as directed in Matthew 5. We are the remnant of God's people, the good apples, who invite God into our everyday lives and live in success, health, wealth, prosperity, peace, and applied biblical knowledge as those spoken of in Isaiah 65. Apples, welcome or welcome back. Apples, welcome or welcome back to the weekly podcast, The Good Apple, with me, your host, Sharonda Simone. Remember that we do have new episodes every single Sunday. Now, if you would like to be alerted to when those episodes are coming out, definitely hit that subscribe button if you are tuning in on YouTube, or you can also join my email list serve. All of the information will be down in the show notes as well as the description box. Again, it just really depends on the platform you're using to listen to the podcast. Now, I do want to say that I am really excited because today we have a guest speaker, a co-host, and I know you're going to be blessed by this episode. This is the very first episode with a guest. So this is a first here on the Good Apple podcast, um, and I could not be more honored to be joined by Grace McCoy. Now, I'm going to give more about that a little bit later, but before we get into today's episode, I do want to say a warm welcome back to all of our faithful listeners and supporters. I appreciate all of the texts and the Facebook and Instagram messages and posts. Believe me, I am so very grateful. Thank you so much for continuing the conversation. I also want to say a warm welcome to our new listeners. If this is your first time tuning in, I am so happy and I'm excited that you're here. Just know it is not an accident that you're listening in and God is, as usual, going to show up and show out. Now, every week I do like to give a special shout out to one of the Good Apple community members. So if you are listening in and you have not let me know, please do so because I would love to give you a warm welcome and a shout out. Now, this week, I want to give a special hello to my good friend, my sister from another mister, the one who blessed me with the title of godmother to an amazing little girl named Skylar. Today, the shout out is to Jeanette from Michigan. Sis, thank you so very much for tuning in and for listening week after week. Thank you so much for being a friend to me. You know, even outside of the realm of social media, you truly are someone who I love and I appreciate in a genuine way. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast and the Good Apple community at large. Jeanette, may the Lord continue to bless you in all that you do. Thank you so very much. All righty, now before we get into the riveting conversation, Apples, if you are able to go ahead, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for the opportunity to come together and to fellowship with other good apples. 
Heavenly Father, we ask right now that if there are areas in our lives that we need to submit to you, that you would help us to identify them in this moment. Father God, we ask right now that if there's any distraction in our midst, that you would show us so that we can remove the distraction. And in the name of Jesus, according to the authority given to us in Luke 10, 19, we come against every plan of the enemy that would prevent us from getting the information that God has for us in this episode. Lord, we thank you so much for loving us, even though we are not always lovely. Lord, we thank you so much for forgiving us and for allowing us multiple opportunities to get it right. We lift you up, Father God. We praise you for being awesome, amazing, and perfect. We give you all the laud and adoration. Thank you so much for being a great daddy. We love you, Lord. All this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so let me take a moment to introduce our amazing guest, okay? Now, the conversation that I'm going to share with you has been pre-recorded, all right? But um, I am just going to try and, you know, chop it up. Remember, the goal is to have shorter segments this season. So if you are enjoying the shorter segments, let me know. Or if you prefer the longer segment, also let me know as well. Okay, but um, to start out, just want to introduce our guest, our co-host for today, Grace McCoy. Now, Grace McCoy is a 26-year-old mother to a lovely and bright little girl named Olivia Apples. She is absolutely adorable. Now, Grace and her family live in Texas, and Grace is a born-again believer as of 2019. She's also a busy homemaker, and she also enjoys encouraging other women to seek and live for Christ. She also has a really nice blog post, gracemccoy.com, and I enjoy reading her posts because they're genuine and they're really informative. They're also very easy to digest and inspiring. She enjoys sharing on topics including homesteading, traditional living, and homeschooling. Now, it was actually after reading one of her blog posts on the topic of submission that I was prompted to ask her to share on this platform. So, Apples, please give a warm welcome to the good Apple, Grace McCoy, and also be sure to check out all of her social media platforms and her blog. Everything will be linked down in the show notes for you. All right, let's be sure to give her lots of good Apple community love and reception. Let's talk with Grace now. Hello, Grace. How are you? I am doing well. So excited to be here. Thank you for having me. How are you? Oh, believe me, it is my pleasure to have you on. I am so grateful that you agreed to come and share with us. I'm doing really well. I am pumped and I'm excited for what God is going to do in our lives, you know, as the ones having the conversation, but also in the lives of our good Apple listeners. Now, I just want to jump right into it. So if you can tell me in your own words, your own experience, whether it is with your spouse or with your relationship with God, you know, what is biblical submission? So biblical submission was something that took me a little while to understand in my walk with Christ. Um, I, what, like, like you have mentioned before, I am a born-again believer. I gave my life to Christ in 2019. Um, before that, I didn't really agree with submission to anything. <laughs> and I think many of us who are, are kind of um, – who have allowed ourselves to be raised by uh, societal fan- standards can agree. We, we don't really want to submit. We want to be our own self and our own flesh and indulge in whatever we want to do. But when I came to Christ, I realized I, I was at my breaking point. And I was like, okay, I have tried everything else in my life. What is it going to do? It's not going to hurt me if I give God another chance. So it was in that moment that I heard him you need to live for me. And on this journey, in the beginning, I always prayed and prayed and asked, why isn't this happening? I want this to go this way. Please make this happen in this way. Please make this happen in this time. Please make this happen according to this timeline. And I realized as I I was battling frustrations, like, God, why why are you not answering my prayers? It was because my prayers were self-centered. 
And I remember feeling so humble and realizing that I wasn't living my life for Christ, but I was expecting him to manipulate my life in a way that I wanted it to. So for me, on this journey where I'm at now, I realize that submission to God is denying myself, denying my fleshly desires, denying my fleshly and earthly and worldly wants to pursue a life that each and every day glorifies and honors Christ. That was absolutely beautiful, Grace. And it was beautiful because it is truth. You know, I phrased the question and I asked you, okay, what is biblical submission to you in your experience? But your response was biblical. And that's just so beautiful because when we think about what true submission is, it really is just saying, you know what, I'm not going to try and do it my way. You know, you said, Grace, that you tried that. It didn't work. So you said, all right, let me see what would happen if I truly make the decision to submit to God. Now, when we look at the actual definition of submission, it means the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. So if we put that into biblical submission to God, it is the action of accepting or yielding to God, to his will and to his authority. So it's literally a decision. Okay, and that's what you described, Grace. You know, here on the Good Apple podcast, I try and stress the importance of, you know, using the Bible objectively. So many times in life we can, you know, just interject our own subjective um, perspective, you know. And of course, I mean, we're living life individually, right? So at some point it's going to be, you know, our own experience that we put into what we read in the word of God. And of course, you know, how it plays out in our lives. But at the end of the day, the Bible is truth. And we should use it as the litmus test. So regardless of our own emotions, you know, Grace said it well, regardless of our own emotions, we have to still submit to the will of God. And that was a decision you made, right? Would you agree that it was a decision for you that you weren't forced to do that? Yes, absolutely. And I, I don't know if we were going to touch on this at this moment, but I did want to emphasize that when we hear submission, you mentioned this early on when you were describing the S word, it's, it, there's a lot of division, um, but I think it's because we're fighting our flesh, but submission is a choice. Submission does not mean that submitting to our husbands now means that they have ownership of us. It's a choice that we're making. Our husbands have authority of us through Christ, but not in the way that society paints the picture. It is absolutely a choice, and I chose and I choose each and every day to do this because I know in the Word of God that at the end of the day, it is glorifying Him, our Father. If I could, I just want to echo what Grace just mentioned and what she really explained so well because you know submission for so many people especially with the way it is portrayed in you know the social media platforms and pop culture in society submission is seen almost like a weakness you know you lose your identity um, and it's a really big misconception among many people not only christians you know, because when we hear the word submission, it's almost like, okay, you're going to be a pushover, you know, you lose your identity, you lose your voice, you're weak. But no, you know, when we look at the actual definition of submission, it's the action or fact of accepting and yielding to a superior force or the authority of another person. So submission actually takes restraint. You have to be a strong individual to submit. You know, it actually takes self-control because, you know, when we submit to God, we're not doing what we want to do. You know, instead of just saying, okay, YOLO, you know, whatever makes me happy, you know, that's really popular now. If it makes you feel good, do it. I mean, you know, instead of just giving in to those flesh desires, like you said, Grace, submission is actually saying, no, I am going to sacrifice my own will and what I want to do. And instead, I'm going to yield to God's authority. And that's not always easy. You know, living for yourself and doing what you want to do, I mean, I think that's much easier. Gosh, in the moment, you know, let's be honest, Apples, doing what we want to do, that actually feels better. 
But guess what? That's not God's way. That's actually anti-God. It's anti-Christ. But if instead we don't give in to those flesh desires, we don't give in to the temptation to do it our way, you know, to act out or to respond the way we feel, right? The emotions, that soul response. I think that, that self-control, that discipline, I think that is actually the epitome of strength. It's the opposite of weakness. And, you know, we can also take that even a step further into our relationships, right? Whether they be platonic relationships or in our marriages, you know, the Bible calls us as wives to submit to our spouses. And I know it can be a bit touchy, but still, that's what the Bible calls us to do. It calls us to submit. You know, the word of God says we are supposed to submit in our marriages. Grace, what do you think about that? Oh my gosh, I agree. There is so much strength and submission, so much discipline involved. It's, can you imagine just being in a, having a discussion with your husband that you particularly don't agree with, but at the end of the day, he turns out to be right. Fighting your flesh and your tongue to to belittle them or to be argumentative or to speak negatively or to yell or to just simply not listen and give your spouse an opportunity to speak. It is so, it is so humbling realizing that, man, I spoke negatively so much for so long. It takes a lot of strength to really be submissive and kind and quiet and meek like, like the Bible says. There's a lot of strength to be had in this position, in this role. Oh yes, I have had to eat my fair share of humble pie a few times in my marriage. Now my husband isn't here right now, but if he were, he would quickly jump on the mic and say, yes, that is true. Now I am personally a very opinionated individual. I'm a very strong personality, but being submissive doesn't change that. You know, oftentimes we think that, okay, the moment we give our lives to Christ, yes, we are a new creation. However, we're still the same personality. You know what I'm saying? So just because I'm submitted to God doesn't change the fact that I still have an opinion, you know, and a strong personality. Um, however, I have had to learn and I continue to learn how to submit and still be Sharonda in my marriage. Because after all, that is who my husband married, you know. So I think that, you know, doing it God's way, that definitely has taught me how to be submissive to my husband and also to God, you know. Um, and even with my walk with Christ, um, I mean, you know, how can you truly argue with God? You know, of course, you know, with your spouse, it's, it's easier. You guys are two, you know, emotional humans, right? But with God, you can't really argue with God. But even still, there have been times when, you know, I've gone to God and it's like, you know, I'm a little kid and I'm crying, you know, fussing, whining and, you know, why aren't things going my way? And why aren't you doing life the way I planned it? And how come you're not answering my prayers? Why can't I get what I want? You know, I mean, we've all been there. All right. Um, but even in my Christ walk, I've had to eat humble pie because you guys look, there have been times when I go to God and I'm like, wah, wah, wah. why isn't it happening the way I want? And then maybe like a couple years later, a month later, a week later, I see like, oh God, that's why you didn't let it go my way. You know, that's why you didn't answer my prayers the way I wanted to. That's why you closed that door. That's why you didn't provide me with that opportunity that I thought I wanted, that I was crying for, you know, that I wasn't truly submitting that to you. That's why you didn't allow that to happen. You know what I'm saying? So even in my walk with God, I'm constantly having to eat humble pie. Thank God, you know, he is not like humans, okay? He doesn't hold a grudge. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't continue to remind us of all the, you know, improper requests or the, the requests that we made that would not have helped us out. You know, thank God he's not like that. I could not agree with you more, especially when you mentioned how you realized a year or so later, a week or so later, even a day or so later, this is what you were protecting me from, God. How oftentimes in our walk, at me especially, I know, um, 
are we not patient? And submitting requires patience because we live in a society that's fast-tracked. We want everything now. We want answers now. We want confirmation now. We want validation now. And submitting to Christ means knowing that things will be done according to his will and his time. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of strength to wait for that time. This episode of The Good Apple Podcast is being sponsored by SharondaSimone.com, the website where I share all of my raves and faves for beauty, motherhood, fashion, home, decor, and lots more. All of these items will keep you bougie on a budget. So be sure to check out www.SharondaSimone.com. Now back to our show. Now, there are a few Bible verses that I do want to talk about right here because I think that in the conversation of submission, we can also look at the benefits. You know, yes, we know there's a sacrifice, but also the Bible is really, really good about pointing out the benefits of doing what is right. So if you can turn to James 4, verse 7 through 8, James 4, verse 7 through 8 reads, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now here in the book of James, we are specifically told to submit. It is, you know, sound biblical advice, all right? So even though it wasn't God himself talking, we know that the entire Bible was inspired by Holy Spirit. So if it's in there, it's something that we should pay attention to. And notice James writes, submit yourselves then to God. So that is the direct, you know, I would say almost like a command, but it's a very strong suggestion at the very least that submission to God is what we need to do. And then I like how the next statement, it seems as though it's a completely different thought, but it's actually going along with submission. So submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So if we are looking at the way the passage flows, when you submit to God, you are essentially resisting the devil. Because when we submit, when we sacrifice our own will, when we stop doing what we want to do and instead yield to the will and authority of God, then we're resisting the devil, that flesh part of us. We're resisting the temptation to do wrong, to sin, to be in error, right? And then here comes the blessing of submission. The devil will flee from you. See, Satan and God cannot coexist in the same place. Light and dark cannot be together. So when you submit yourself to God, you resist the devil and Satan has to leave. And then the next part is also really beautiful. Apples, it says, come near to God. Now, in order for us to submit to God, we have to have an intimate relationship with him. So submission allows us to come near to God. And in turn, he will come near to you. You do this, God does this. So we submit, Satan flees, God comes near as we draw near to him. It's absolutely beautiful, okay? And then it says, wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now, you know, when we talk about submission, if we are truly, again, looking at the definition of biblical submission, it is the act or the action of accepting or yielding to God, to his will, and to his authority. So guess what? There's no more gray area. It's no more, well, this is how I feel. This is what pop culture says. This is what my parents want. This is what my children expect of me. So even though it might not be in alignment with what God has, you know, there's no more, the, the guesswork is out of it. We don't have to sit there and say, oh, you know, should I do this in order to make so-and-so happy? We no longer have to be in a position of double-mindedness and wonder and confusion Submission to God, a benefit of submitting to God, means that, guess what? It's no longer a question of what we should do. If we are yielding to God's will and his authority, then it's a plain answer every single time. Apples, I think this frees us up from a lot of the stress and strain in our relationships and even just in our personal lives that we deal with 
because no longer do we have to, you know, be in a place of indecision or indecisiveness. I think that's wonderful, Grace. I mean, this to me is really, really good stuff. I agree. I love I love how you said that, Sharonda. I agree wholeheartedly. And I think sometimes we are afraid to submit, but it's because we are afraid to let go and step aside from our expectations of how we want to be. Ooh, okay. So now, Grace, you're really getting into some deep, deep stuff. Um, for me, initially, it was actually dangerous territory when we talk about expectations. But you know what? The Lord has really worked with me over the years. But maybe we can have you back on again in a future episode so that we can really dig into, you know, expectations as far as what we think you know, should happen in our lives and how we really need to align them with how God has our lives planned out. I don't know. I think that's like a really big topic and something that a lot of Christians struggle with. You know, I know that in the past, I really, really had to work on myself, you know, and allow Holy Spirit to truly change certain parts of me when it came to expectations. So yeah, let's plan on, you know, circling back to that conversation in a future episode. Um, but I know that there were a few Bible verses that you wanted to talk about specific to, you know, this topic of submission. So I'm going to go ahead and give the floor back to you, Grace. So submitting to God, some scriptures that reflect that, but don't necessarily say it in black or white, I feel like are Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. I know for me personally, I'm a very literal person. I like things to be put out in plain text, something that is very obvious and that I don't really have to second guess and really read in and study to. But this journey in following Christ has really taught me that wisdom comes with time and with knowledge and understanding and really studying. And so when we read some of these verses, I feel like Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 is very, very well known. Sometimes we forget to really dig deep into that verse just because we hear it so often and we, we know it. It's on shirts, it's on mugs, it's on wallpaper, but let's really listen to what it says. Proverbs 3, chapters five to, uh, chapter 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the word with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Most people stop there, but let's keep going. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I know in my journey when I first became a born-again believer, I used to have this mentality that, yes, I believe in God, but I'm realistic and this is, you know, a different time. But that couldn't be further from the truth. God's word still applies now. And when we read this verse, we realize we don't know better than he does. Just because we were born into our bodies does not mean that we know ourselves, we know our path, we know our purpose more than Christ does. And I really love and appreciate these gentle reminders from Christ. Do not lean on your own understanding. You don't know better in this situation than I do. I have your path already created for you. Lean on to me. Turn away from your fleshly expectations. Turn away from your fleshly desires. Turn away from evil and those temptations and really press in to me and what I want to do for you, for your path and for your life. A few other verses that have come to mind upon studying in my walk was Psalms 1, 1 through 2. And it reads, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. When, when we read that, I feel like some of our focus becomes set on the word law. And it can be legalistic, but when we really open our hearts and allow, allow God to move through us, we realize that God just wants us to submit and let go of our ways, especially if you're someone who maybe didn't grow up with a good understanding of Christ, like myself. We really walked, or at least I did, I allowed myself to walk in the way that I thought was right, that that didn't always align with Christ, that I later found out my beliefs and my perception of things were things that were 
sent to me by a spirit that was not the Holy Spirit. And so when we look and we really soften our hearts, we're able to understand that we are blessed in the way. We are blessed if we walk with the Lord. And we are blessed if we walk and allow ourselves to be led in his way and not try to focus on what we want to do, where we want to go, on the timing of things. Um, when we really delight in his word and delight in his presence and are patient. Grace, that was such a great explanation. I mean, and I truly appreciate your transparency and just how genuine you are. I really appreciate that. Thank you so very much because I know that all of our listeners, myself included, I can relate to that, you know, and I've said this before on previous episodes that it doesn't matter if you consider yourself, you know, a baby Christian or a seasoned Christian. The Good Apple Podcast is for Christians no matter what stage of your walk because we're all learning so much every day about God and about truly, you know, being the best Christian we can be. And so I think that, you know, when we hear Bible verses, again, that don't specifically say, hey, here's what you need to do as far as submission. I mean, the Bible verses that you talked about in Psalms, I mean, these verses, Psalms and Proverbs, you know, they give us wisdom. They give us insight. And they also, in the end, when I look at everything and just you know, hearing you explain it and break it down, in the end, Apple's submission to God allows us to fully experience his love because we don't know all the answers, right? And there are so many times when we think, that we have it all figured out. We think we have all the plans put together, but then you look around and you're like, hmm, that was the wrong choice. Or praise God, he saves us from making the wrong choice because we have submitted. You know, as a mom, I have, you know, rambunctious young children. And there are so many times when my boys especially are like, mom, why won't you let us jump off the back of the couch? Like, it seems like a great plan, right? It seems like something that would be totally fun. But I'm like, look, Sweetheart, you don't know what I know. And I feel like sometimes God is saying that to us like, you know what, kid, you don't know what I know. And I'm looking at my sons and I'm like, there is something called the law of gravity. You don't know how that would play out when you backflip off of the couch, you know, so no, we can't do that, you know, so being submissive to God and truly submitting our lives, you know, in all areas it is more about being able to fully experience his love, you know, his protection and also getting that direction, right? And getting clarity and, you know, protection and so forth. So, I mean, I think it is something that we should, you know, constantly look into in our lives. I mean, I know that I try to be very aware about, you know, whether I'm submitting or not, because at the end of the day, you know, if we find that there are areas in our lives that aren't showing fruit of God's blessings and direction, right? Then maybe it's because we haven't submitted those areas to God. Because if God's in it, it cannot fail. Not saying that it's going to always be easy, whatever the situation is. But if God is in it, or when God is in it, it cannot fail. So if you find yourself struggling with double-mindedness and being uncertain in certain areas of your life, relationships, job opportunities, parenting, you know, your marriage, dating, if you find that there's a lot of uncertainty or even discontentment, maybe it's because it's not been submitted to God. That's a good time to do a submission check, you know, because the Bible clearly states that blessing and direction come with following God's plan by submitting to God, right? James 4, 7 through 8. And another verse I think is almost like a warning, you know? So anytime I read the Bible, I try to look for, you know, the principle in it, the lesson I need to learn, the benefit or the blessing, the warning. And in Proverbs 14, verse 12, the King James Version reads, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but in the end thereof are the ways of death. In the end, it's the way of death. But guess what? It seems right to us in the moment. So we have got to submit to God. Now, in the next episode, Apples, we are going to be talking about what submission isn't. 
And Grace, I know that you and I both have briefly talked about, you know, our own submission stories. Um, so Apples, you're really going to want to tune in next Sunday as we continue this conversation. But I do want to just um, pause right now. Next Sunday, we are going to pick up right where we left off and we're going to be talking about what submission isn't. Trust me, Apples, you're not going to want to miss this. Both Grace and I have agreed to be transparent as well as respectful to our relationships with our spouses, but I do believe that it's going to be helpful whether you are male, female, married, unmarried, dating, it doesn't matter. We're all called to submit to God, and I do believe that this next conversation where we talk about what submission isn't, it's really going to be helpful to you. Okay. All right. So make sure you check down below. Okay. In the description box or the show notes, because all of Grace's contact information will be there. Also, the Bible verses that we discussed will be linked as well. And I do want to say, Grace, thank you so very much for joining us today. I'm so glad to know that you'll be back again next Sunday so we can continue our conversation. All right, the apples, thank you so very much for tuning in. So until next week, remember, I am Sharonda Simone, and I will either see you at the top or from the top. You decide. Bye.